from the no here as a local organizer as well. Um, we're here for the Dark Table team celebrating 10 years of existence. Yeah. Um, yeah, thanks everyone for getting up reasonably early for us. We promised there would be cake and we will deliver this promise in case you stay here Ooh. with us until the end. <laughs> um, this is, I think, the most ill-prepared talk I ever gave in my life, so you have to excuse that. I brought this... That doesn't apply to me. I have to worse. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, we have a couple of slides. We want to step through that. We have mainly a couple of thoughts that we'd like to share about the community, about history, how did you enjoy with this project. If you have any comments, um, yeah, feel free to interrupt us and ask in between, because it will not throw us off our schedule. <laughs> yeah, there is one. Um, yeah, I'm full screen this. Since there's a break right after this, um, I think we might as well jump in and, and start with the slides and yeah, drag it in whatever length this turns out to be. So, contents of this talk. At first, um, we'd like to introduce what is Dark Table because, um, yeah, I keep meeting people who, who ask me, Dark, what? Sorry, what are you doing? So, just we're all on the same page with that. And we'll have a very quick historic overview. I thought I had a couple of very cool screenshots, like the first window of Dark Table that ever opened, which looked very terrible, but I didn't find it anymore. So we'll have a couple of dif different ones. And then, yeah, we'd like to focus on some organizational aspects because, yeah, 10 years is a big thing. It's time to reconsider what we've done. Let's think about organization. How did we manage this? And in fact, we did not. We're just a bunch of geeks, we have no social skills, we just do whatever is fun to us at the time, and it has worked out reasonably well so far. So, we should talk about this. The first was our table. This is just a couple of random screenshots I found on my hard drive. This is the light table mode, so this is the one aspect that we focus on less. This is the digital asset management um, aspect, so you have all your images in a row, could be thousands, and yeah, you can device workflows here to reasonably quickly select a couple of them and then you would go and uh, develop them one by one. So this is a screenshot where I was look developing an open VDB point cloud thing and to match a, a reference picture of the, the sun. It's weirdly colored, the sun doesn't actually look like that, but I wanted the render to look exactly like that. And so this is one use case for dark table that may not be super obvious to photographers, I think. So, yeah, that's the edit mode, and you probably all have seen that. We have a bunch of key features. What's your favorite feature? My favorite feature is wind keys, I guess. Wind keys, anyone know that? You can type colon at any time and then go VI style. Like at least colon Q works really reliable. <laughs> the others are, well, you can, we should have made this an April school joke, but yeah. I'm actually well, using it. Yes, we, we have that. So that's that's the two key features that the two of us use every day. Other than that, um, there's the non-destructive photography workflow, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, um, dark table, you don't really safety work. It's just safe in the background, uh, in the database, and also in the sidecar files. And you just close dark table when you're done, and when you open it again, uh, you can start over or continue working where you left. And I think that's... That helps a lot if you don't have to think about anything like that. Just close it, go away, and the next day or the next month you can keep working on the images. Yeah, the other thing that sets it apart from uh, other more developers is probably the local edits. It's pretty uh, sophisticated. You can do hand drawn things, you can have like a semi scripted interface that grabs ranges of values on the input and then just works only on that, like automatically. Uh, computes a mask for you from, say, just the sky colors or bright colors, or stuff like that, which can be really useful, but also daunting to combine that. I have to say, I don't fully understand how you use this. So if anyone masters that, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to hear your workflows. One more thing is um, the GPU acceleration. We've had GPU acceleration for the longest time now. It's based on OpenCL, and to tell the truth, I'm not sure for how much longer we'll have this library around. Uh, vendor support seems to be going away in, in, at some point. They're not very enthusiastic about it. And also, 
it's going faster, but I believe we're still kind of CPU bound there. So in the future, this would be one point to, to work on, I think. Yeah, um, I said the digital asset management part is not our strongest that part. There are people who much prefer other programs for that. Still, the database scales up to tens of thousands of images easily. Every so often, we get feature requests or bug reports really from people who have half a million of images in their database. And they are just really slowing down if I'm searching for tags or something, and then we add an index or something. So this can be sped up if you have problems with that. And then, yeah, there's tons and tons of features I never dreamt about. And, and one thing I, I really want to point out is that we have this modular architecture. We might get back to that in, in the graphs later on, which enables us to just we can never do that, but we could just delete a C file, it would not build a DSO, we would not load it back in, and then parts of this thing is just gone. And you can even just delete the uh, shared library once it's installed and it's just lacking there. If so you want to make it lightweight. Yeah, you can just delete stuff or copy stuff in. That works. And so the core interface is reasonably stable, we'll see that in a graph later on. But yes, the most <coughs> important part, I think, about Darktable is the community. Like, I can write a little bit of code, you can do the same, but we have so much more in this program. There's stuff in it, I have no idea how it works. And it's just because there's so many people supporting us and there's a, a good community working on it. And yeah, that always surprises me how that how that really works. So let's have a look at that with a quick historic overview. This is the first commit. It looks terrible because it comes from SVN, right? So uh, 10 years ago I thought SVN would, would be a model. So it's almost exactly 10 years ago, which is like a CBS. Oh yeah, it could have been worse. It could have snowed. It could have been snowing. <laughs> and and I did not bring the first picture of the GUI, but I did bring a couple of glitch images on the way. Because I think this is fun. And most of you who are developers probably know that if you're working on images every so often there comes one out that looks totally not what it should. But it's fun to to work. <coughs> this one here is one of my favorites because it looks like our missing image skull in a way, but it's really a Laplacian pyramid and the dressing scheme is broken, it just came out like that on my screen. Fun, that fun. Uh, the other thing here looks like a feature, it's like a, a good taste filter or something. <laughs> <laughs> this is what it looked like opening it. And uh, the technical explanation is there were glints, like the eyes catch highlights, you get a glint, very bright pixel. One feels like some of her bra. Yeah, exactly. She was wearing this dainty top. Yeah. It just produced a not a number, not a number propagates, right? It's viral. And yeah, then if you get like a like local contrast, it just fills the whole block with black. So we did not censor anything. We are not looking at your pictures. Mostly. Mostly. <laughs> so who, who does our table? I said we, we have this community, and I said we're not really managing it, but what does it look like? We, we have a ton of contributors, this very large group, and yeah, it's very many people caring about this thing. So I thought for today we could do a retrospective and do some data mining, mining on the, the Git repository. And what we regularly do with the, the Git repository is we just check who had commits since the last major release, and we put those in an author's file, and there's a contributor credits thing. We have a, a release workflow thing that just goes through Git and says, okay, listen, this guy needs to be in the about dialogue. So that's interesting, but it doesn't say anything about the code. Like, it, it doesn't tell you who owns this line of code, or is this a good line of code, or comes another contributor and needs to fix it, like at least the indentation, or maybe it's just broken, and then half a year later, you just remove the whole thing. So, what I want to look at instead here is, is this Git playing based output of a shell script, which of course you all read and understand by now. Um, but then there was Pippin's talk the other day and he, he showed us a tool that visualizes this kind of thing much nicer. And so forget the script, I did run it. It is interesting, but we actually have graphical plots and yes, I want to show you those. Those little graphics we need, so we need graphics and not just numbers. We're visual people and I was too lazy to visualize. So, first block, and you just interrupt me and tell me okay. whatever you think about it if you yeah. want. That's the survival plot. So that's 100% is first commit, or I don't know, 
first year probably, yes. year zero, uh, yeah. and then it goes down over the years. Like how many lines of the initial lines of code make it till today? And I think this is very interesting to look at because that here is probably my first prototype with the terrible GUI and everything. Oh, it's not there anymore. But it also somewhat tells us that there is about 50% chance to get over two years. <laughs> and once you make these two years of the code, it's probably staying. Yeah. And then it doesn't go down as much as you would think. Like this is really just a crappy initial prototype that filled in holes with like stuff code that does something and you need to remove it afterwards. And after that, it's kind of stable. This is the same thing, um, but just added over time. So every one of those blocks is the lines of code introduced in the year you can see at the bottom. And then you can see its history through time, so as it goes down. And you can see to the right the recent push for a new GUI and yeah, for the yield contribution from back here. It's, yeah. A steep increase, you can clearly see the spike. But you can also clearly see the, the original old code stayed for a very long time, up until 2015. And then suddenly, well, we're not sure, it happened a few things. For one, we removed some uh, libraries we uh, bundled. Um, we also ran a code formatter once or twice. Which like, changes ownership. Yeah, mm -hmm. which, because uh, I ran it so it touched half the code, so in the end I was over of half the code. Mm -hmm. So that might also be a little misleading, but um, I guess you can factor that out of these graphs, but we didn't because of reasons. Yeah, about right. libraries, maybe because you mentioned libraw, we, we were based on ufraw, then a home made lib ufraw, which is it's no such thing, we just had that. And then we had libraw as well, and they removed some feature. It was the same story, but different thing. And this is why we are where we are now. So this is about <coughs> authors, which is something I find very interesting as well. So this is what you can do as your one-man army. And this is me. Over time, it was relatively stable, but given the total complexity of the thing, it doesn't really matter at all. Like the whole thing, you need everybody else. See this blue thing on top? That's others. That's everybody else who does a little patch here and there. So, yeah. It's a massive number of supporting people in here. I mean, I uh, don't know if you have the actual number in there. It's over 140 people or something like that. I, I counted 191. 191 people in the midst. Um, yeah, I find that impressive. I don't know about him. It would probably be I mean, uh, some people just one line of code fixing a typo in a uh, readme file or something like that. But yeah, as we heard, we have this old school workflow. You go to IRC, we're not there, you do that over weeks again, and then it's, it's hard to get your one line of code into dark table. Yeah, but uh, so uh, it stays. <laughs> <laughs> it's also a little misleading because uh, this also, yeah, keep this. Uh, this also co uh, contains the user menu and the translations, which, except especially the .po files, are big. Like lines of code files, uh, they're huge. So I guess half of the people you see in here are actually translators. First one, like Sonsu, I don't know if he's here, or Tatika, or I don't know, some of them. They have maybe one or two or three lines of code change in their life, but still they're in here, like this. That is ping, ping. This big thing. Yeah. It's just translations. It's a big deal. Yeah. It's translation um, code. An example is. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> an example is this red thing down here. It's from Russia. Apparently, it's smaller lines of code than uh, Spanish. User manual. User manual is the big. User manual is the big one. But yeah, that, that's a little hard it's because, because it's translated. Because, because English. For the first scratch of translation, so it was hard to work. Yeah. Like but you also translate the user manual. And Ulrich did all the user manual itself and a lot of code. So it's half of the English. No, but, but on the other hand, it doesn't matter. Exactly. All I wouldn't call so it misleading. Alexandra's push for a Russian translation really early on also meant that there's more people going into the project. So all of that is very important work. This is what you just said about the file types. Let me see if I can find the PO in here. Yeah, it's the big, the big thing on top. Yeah. Uh, but the biggest part that, is translations. translations and user manual. Yeah. A bit of functionality too, but 
Yeah. Both the reduces and the same. Both the C files, so the actual code. And the great part here is the other files. So our API is quite stable. The header files don't grow. Oh, yeah. But the implementation changes a lot. So that's what I meant with the modular design earlier on. Yeah. So the module interface in the core is kind of stable. That's good, I think. And then the modules is where all the work is stayed. Yeah, I mean, you can also see some, at some time we introduced Lua scripts yeah, in the right, but right. <laughs> you can read a lot of that if you know what you're looking for. Oh, so, any cats in here? Yes. Hmm. Well, later comment. We have oh. cats. <laughs> Conclusion from this uh, part of the talk, I was surprised to see how long code lasts. We don't, but replace it or delete it, not unnecessarily. And even considering that there's this code formatter that would change ownership very grossly, you don't really see that. And looking at Hendrik's code, Hendrik has done a ton of work on Darktable in the early years. He has not since January 2016, still 50% of his code is in there, and it's functional, it's working. So yeah, I don't know what the conclusions are to be drawn from that. Either everybody just writes perfect code here, and you don't need to touch it. <laughs> I somehow doubt it. And the other thing is there may be a slight possibility that we don't even reconsider the whole technical debt. We just keep it. Pile it up. Right? Pile it up. So yeah, the number of contributors, I just said, yes, around just shy of 200, 191 what I counted. And they're all from everywhere around the world. Like we have time zones, nationalities, backgrounds, and completely different mindsets. And, and as we've seen in, in the code side, it's not only coders. We have people who test it, who suggest feature improvements, who translate it into weird languages. A couple of techies, like people who know their technical aspects, they can do some programming, or they're just into signal processing, or they know photography, or they're really... Or color know, management. Exactly, just technical people who don't necessarily need to write code, but tell us to fix the things. And some photographers, I yeah. suppose. How do we organize it? I promise we will talk a little bit about our yeah, stringent management issues. Yeah. Exactly. So there, there's a norm. The dark table is like a, a duocracy. Whoever does it, <coughs> the keys under the doormat. Exactly. Yeah. Be up after yourself and be nice. Be, be reasonable about it and do whatever you want because we're all grown ups, right? Uh, yeah, this works mostly. But it works surprisingly well, I'm going to say. So yeah, it's a, it's a spare time project for us. We want this to be fun. We don't enjoy managing people. So if we have any rule at all, is we never keep anyone from doing code if they're enjoying themselves. There's a couple of quality assurance things here and there. We want this to be reasonably fast and so on. So we have, in our history, rejected a handful of patches mostly because we didn't have time to review them or rewrite them in a, in a way that we wanted. But yeah, if somebody steps up and says, I enjoy doing this, I want to fix this because I think the rest is cool, but this needs work, then yes, please. Which works to an extent, right? Because you can't just do something and then leave it half broken and disappear. You need responsible people as well, and this is where, where this fine person comes into play, I think. <laughs> Mostly you and we have Ulrich as well. We have a, a couple of super responsible, like senior people who just show up and are reasonable and yeah, grown up about things and clean up after the rest and have this this really precise way of making things work. I mean, we have to maintain it. That is that is the big problem of a non-destructive workflow, right? You have your picture, you have your XMP file. And you come back after five years, you expect this thing to, to produce the very same output. Uh, and we promise that. We try to stick to that. And yeah, whatever crappy module is released with a release with Git, we are less strict about this. We promise to support this, however long Darktable is around. So you can just open your old picture and it should look pixel identical. I mean, we have broken that a few times. I have a few pictures in my database. Don't say that. Okay, no, it does. We're just, 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 we just, just no, bad. No one's watching the videos, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, and we bro broke these promises a few times, like in slideways, but 
there's like we consider those things parts. improvements yeah, sure. that we think okay yeah. nobody's gonna rely with this workflow on this part yeah. yeah. or rounding errors and closing points and just pretend yeah. or yeah. something like that but that doesn't count right? yeah, that, this is also a being responsible thing right because there's a trade-off of keeping legacy code and having to maintain it in the future and this yeah this is the second aspect you, you need people like that what did we learn from, from this uh, approach of not managing the, the project. I was surprised how quickly we gained features. Like initially it was really just me doing a little bit, but then everybody came and did super cool things and it was very fast to, to develop. Like both in terms of community and features of the program. And without any push or something like that. No, yeah. And people, for some good reason, maybe it was just the right time for composer like that, so there wasn't much there wasn't much raw therapy, was closed source at the time this was started. So this was the whole reason why Dark Table exists. So uh, mm. thanks for not open sourcing earlier, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nowadays we have features I, I would have never thought of. I, I could never have been like a, a commercial manager and stand there and you give me $13 million and I go and think of those features. I just would not have had this idea. I'm not a pro photographer, right? I, I don't do dodging and burning with a pen. Now we can do this in dark table. I don't know how well it works because I still don't do it. But there are a ton of features like that that yeah, I would not have paid a developer for to do it. They just step up out of the crowd and, and do it as a community thing. And I, I think this is amazing. It's what the, I really yeah, learned to love about open source in the community. Same for, for languages. We have languages I didn't even know the exact <laughs> And yes, we're coming back to that. We, we have a ton of technical debt because of this approach as well. Like we also pile up crap code because we're soft about this. Right? We say, okay, if you have fun doing this, and this is a cool feature, and there's a couple of people who want this feature. Well, you, exactly, whatever, come on, let's merge it. We'll, yeah, yeah, we'll maintain it. We'll worry about this later, and then we don't. And so there, <laughs> there's a ton of code that's less than optimal in terms of readability, maintainability, uh, and usefulness, right? We have, we have a ton of the, uh, these modules in Darkroom, the image development modules. Um, some of them are very obvious, you need them like cropping or exposure or something like that. But some of them are really obscure, like we have perceptual night vision uh, simulation. No, okay. no, that was cool. Right? It's, cool that. it's cool, but it's, it's, cool, it's useless, but it's, right? It's useless, but, <laughs> but it's fun because I, I remember this because in the very same year there was a SIGGRAPH paper coming out after we had that for oh, a couple wow. of months. And they did exactly that. Yeah. Okay, cool. The whole, whole stuff. Uh, we have so the audience at SIGGRAPH. Oh, <laughs> we already have that. But did you know that? No, no, no. No, as I said, we're trying to be nice about things. We would never do such a thing. So, what else did we learn? The non-destructive means we cannot really deprecate things. We do, but you can't easily throw it out. So this means after starting from UFRO code, we have 10 years of UFRO style pipeline. That's good. I mean, um, it works. It works, and it works especially because we have a ton of modules, and you can just switch off one half and switch on the other half. Or considering the number, it's more like you switch off 10 percent and switch on the other 10 percent. But yeah, it also means you know, switching off old modules without deprecating them, you're piling up stuff above stuff, which is useless and gets more useless and yeah, it keeps growing. So we could have a whole other session about uh, what do we think we would never ever use again within Darktable and how do we clean this up, but that's not what we're talking about today. Because we want to have fun Lessons learned. Uh, if you want to have fun, you need a community of compatible people. Turns out it's quite many of them. Like you have to just talk, get along, have the same idea of what you want from this project. And then, yeah, there's not a lot of management involved in that. I think this is really the number one most important thing that you, you talk and get along and you have people that have a similar enough mindset to do this together. I have to say, I have to thank Little Graphics Meeting for that because we met, or well, we didn't meet the first time at Little Graphics Meeting, but we met a lot of uh, users and co-developers at LGM 
and it helps an awful lot, as probably everyone of you knows, if you have met someone, talk to them, have a few beers too many together, and just if you, if, even if you only see yourself, each other for these three, four, five days in a year, the rest of the year, you still get along very nicely because you know each other, you know how to reach his IRC messages and know when he's kidding and when is he kidding even more. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> no, we never see this, so... Oof. Oh, we never know. Yeah. Um, no, so, I, I have to thank this community, even the, even the people not contributing to Darktable, for having the whole bigger community and bringing us together. Because I learned about Darktable at LGM in Brussels, from Alexander, a talk he gave, and uh, I think this is the place to say thank you to you all. Yeah, I very much agree. I want to point out another thing um, that's different to commercial projects. Like, as you say, we meet, in the best case, we meet like five days a year. But to be honest, I'm more like every three years or five. <laughs> um, and we have a completely different set of, of people because of that. Right? We, we're not sitting in the same office every day, which means we do not have to get along every day. W which means there's different ways to advance your code. Like we don't have Scrum, we don't do sprints, I'm terrible at all of those things, professionally as well. But here in, in open source, it is good to have an anti-social rock star in your community. Like super narcissist, asshole person who just knows his shit, knows how to code, and you have to get along with him for some time. And I don't have a problem with this kind of people. And I could sit with them in, a, in an office as well. I'm just saying in a bigger community or a bigger team at work, this can turn out to be a problem in open source. I don't know. I don't know about that. Just ignore him. Or, yeah, or just know who he is. Learn how to, how to like people. And then that, that still works. That advances code. Like somebody can push for stuff if he has fun doing it. Then yes, do it. We'll take that code. Because we know we have the janitors after that, right? We also have the responsible people, hopefully. It works after some critical mass of, of community, of course. Yeah, who, who step up and maintain code after like super coders disappear. And, and I think this is something you can do in, in open source as a community and sitting together in an office traditionally in a, in a paid for job. Not enjoy this so much, I think. So. Output and conclusions, I'm not sure I have any. As I, as I said, I'm not very good at managing people or projects or something. Um, if anyone has ideas or directions who you think we should be going this or that way, yeah, come on and talk to us. I, I think we're pretty open about any of these suggestions. <coughs> and yeah, all, all that's left to, to say for us is that I think a huge thanks and uh, to all the supporters. What you just said about LGM, I think there's this big wall of support everywhere here, not only from a community that's directly related to Darktable and actually contributes to code or translations, but just yeah, the sense of we're working on the, the same thing, we all do broad development, we exchange ideas, or we like what we're doing. Yeah, this, this is good, this has been fun, and uh, I'm looking forward to the next thing, yes. <laughs>